With the convergence of artificial intelligence and politics, it is increasingly difficult for voters to differentiate between real and fake. We asked Lindsay Gorman, a technology expert with the German Marshall Fund, to help us discern between fact and fiction in political images. Let's play a first video of Hillary Clinton, apparently on MSNBC. You know, people might be surprised to hear me say this, but I actually like Ron DeSantis a lot. Yeah, I know. I'd say he's just the kind of guy this country needs, and I really mean that. If Ron DeSantis got installed as president, I'd be fine with that. So this is a classic deep fake video where someone has said some of these things and juxtaposed it with Hillary Clinton's likeness and her face and her hair to make it seem like she is now endorsing Ron DeSantis for president in 2024. Does it look realistic to you? What, what do you think? That does sound like Hillary Clinton's actual voice, but I noticed that the synchronization was not there between the audio and her mouth. There was a disconnect. Absolutely. Looking at the mouth is a really good starting place to see if it is indeed matching what the audio is matching. The same thing also when we played it, her head sort of shook in a somewhat mechanical way. It felt maybe a little bit off. Same thing with her eyes and here they're a little blurred out. Um, and so that's, I think, one way of spotting how we can tell that this is a manipulated image. Yeah, so here's President Biden. All right, this one I'm going to ask you about. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-cop. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-democracy. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-American. Donald Trump lacked the courage to act. The brave women and men in blue all across this nation should never forget that. So what did you think of this one? He didn't blink. Not at all, right? So that suggests it's fake. This one's actually real. How's that? <laughs> this was actually a speech he gave to the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Officers. And it looks really like a deep fake. It has sort of a washed out look. He didn't mm -hmm. move very much, just like with the other ones. And yes, he didn't blink for the whole 17 second clip. And when this actually surfaced about a year ago, there were conspiracy theories and people thinking that this had to have been a deep fake, even though it came from the DNC's own social media account and was later published by the White House itself. The reason that we can tell that this one is not a deep fake, we really need to rely on context and the source. Mm -hmm. First of all, coming out a full White House video, giving a speech, and these were remarks that were delivered virtually. We're not only at risk of seeing things that are false and thinking that they're true, mm -hmm. but actually seeing things that are, that are true and thinking that they're false. And that's kind of this liar's dividend that in an information environment that where we can't tell what's real and what's not. A liar's dividend? A liar's dividend that the liar can kind of take the advantage because the liar can just say, well, this, this, maybe this audio that you caught of me, this image that you took of me, that's actually not true. It's, a, it's just a fake. And it's hard to prove whether something is actually real, uh, not just whether something is, is fake. And, and this is really advantageous sort of to autocrats and to those who would sow doubt and discord in our information space. So this one, I don't know if you saw this one when it came out. Does it look familiar to you at all? This this is the image that actually caused a market sell-off, right? It is. It's a fake picture of the Pentagon with what looks like plumes of smoke. Exactly. So how can we tell that this is fake? <laughs> well, for someone who hasn't been to the Pentagon, I, I think it would be hard. There is just something that looks slightly off about this building that I can't quite articulate. These AI-generated images have a sort of hyper-realistic hyper sheen to them. And this one has it a little bit, you can see with the plume. But really, I think this one needs a closer look. The building, as you pointed out, doesn't really actually look like the Pentagon. And even if you hadn't been to the Pentagon, you could see by doing a Google image search and doing it. street view and comparing, is there really an angle of the Pentagon that looks like this? There isn't. Take a look. So these are obviously these photos of, of fake photos of, of Trump being arrested. For someone at home who may not be following things very closely, they might think this was reality. Absolutely, especially from a first look. How can we tell that these are fake? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? Besides they, yeah. that not actually happening. Exactly, and right. context is a really important piece of this. Mm -hmm. in, in this photo, 
Trump has at least three legs. So extra limbs here, I, probably that one. There are a few, a few extra limbs as well. But these absolutely capture the imagination and make people think, oh, was Trump actually arrested? All right, here's one for you. What's real, what's fake? How can we tell? <sighs> okay, so that's his actual lawyer recently um, in New York. So I do recognize him in the context yeah, that one's real from the arraignment. What is this? Is this fake? This is a fake. I think the okay. the maybe the biggest giveaway is the crying. Right. The actual. Oh, is that what he's, he's supposed it. to be yeah, crying? Yeah, he's, he's crying at I his see. hearing. Um, in sort of the technical signatures, this is this does have the sheen. Some of the the gentlemen in the back, their faces are blurred. This one, I want to say it's fake. That one's real. That one is real? Yep. You're kidding. It's just the differences in lighting. Yep, that, that's a real photo there. And this, what you're going through right now, once you look at enough of these, the default position really does become just be skeptical of everything, which that's makes hard. sense because it, if it gets us to check and if it gets us to find a source and investigate mm -hmm. and use these, these media literacy techniques, but on the other hand, it has some dangerous implications for our democracy and our society. We need to be able to trust in what we see and what we hear. It's not realistic for us to check and do a reverse Google image search on every piece of content we come across. It makes having news standards that much more important. And these mostly circulate online. Absolutely, and the role here of the media is, is so crucial in clearly labeling when something is manipulated, when something's fake and when something's real, um, as well as a role, I think, of, of technologies that can give us these digital watermarks mm -hmm. and, and show what's real.